Wolf here. Um, I'm finally back with the, the third episode of Lake of Voices. Hopefully it loads in. Oh shoot, which save was this? This one. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't remember if I did any voices with him. Um, sorry if my camera's a little low. There we go. I'm going to be looking this direction because my screen is over here. My camera's over here. Um, the moment is pleasant. A small bump. Oh shoot, I forgot. This was loud last time. Options, music volume. Okay, the music volume is way down, so you should be able to hear me. Uh, how do I go back? <laughs> Return. Here we go. Um, the moment is pleasant. A small bump against the lar a large burn. I hardened my expression, and the Malay follows suit. Also, I barely remember what happens in the story. Um, it's been a while since I played. I went to the, like, the army and back, and I do remember some sort of monster following them. He moves his free arm down. I fully link his arm with mine. And now, properly settled, look forward. Margaret is following the guide with some reluctance turning back every so often to check on us. I wave my lantern to signal we're catching up. Margaret returns her head to the front and quickens her pace. With a tug on Bimelay, we start to follow them. Oof. Oh, I don't like that noise. <laughs> um. Oh, jeez, I look like sick. The four of us continue cautiously over the bridges. Only this time, the wet, squishy footsteps of the prowl join the sound of our own. In spite of myself, I grip Bemele tighter. The prowler walks without a set pattern, sometimes fast, sometimes slow. It takes long steps, then short ones. At times, it stops walking entirely. Does it hurt to be out of the water like this, or is it trying to be difficult to read? Suddenly, the whispering in the lake grows louder. I steal myself, trying not to let it get to me. Sorry, I have something stuck in my throat. And I don't have any water. Um, the most important thing in a situation like this is to remain calm. I can't lose my head. Then all at once, I notice the guide and Margaret have come to a Bemily, halt. they're stopping. But Malay slows down as I do, and we near Margaret's back. She says, says within some. She says with something akin to distress. There's another one. I tug on Bimelay, and he understands. I draw up close to Margaret, ready to protect her if need be. But the guide holds out a hand. Don't get any closer. Just over his shoulder, I see another prowler stumbling toward us. White liquid dripping from, from its eyes. <laughs> the guide's hand turns over in the air, palm up. Give me a lantern. We'll throw it. Margaret extends her own with a trembling hand. When Bimelay speaks instead, his back is still If tight. you have to take someone's, take mine. Yes. An extra light won't do as much good when we're standing this close together. Mar Margaret takes Bemelay's lantern from him. Guarded relief displayed on... Guarded? Guarded relief displayed on her features. Thank you. Uh, I don't like her voice. <laughs> she hands the lantern to the guide, whose hand grips it tightly, knuckles growing pale. Stay here. I can't throw it too far. The light will blow out before it reaches the Nyx. Oh, I need to read this. <laughs> I was reading it in my head. <laughs> he steps closer to the monster, his movements light and confident. He, as he nears, the prowler starts to back away. It's only, it is only the approaching light that makes it retreat. Or is, is it only the approaching light that's making it retreat? Or are they afraid of him? The guide is far enough away from us that the fog is partially obscuring him, hiding his movements. The voices from the lake grow louder and louder. Water suddenly begins to splash across 
the lake in the distance and on to the edge of the, of the bridge. Ooh. They want him to mess up. Then suddenly the guide takes multiple long and fast strides forward, throws the lantern and jumps backwards to regain the lost distance. Shh. There's a sharp hiss and then a deep splash and the voices of the Nixie grow quieter. Not silent, but quieter. The sigh escapes me, or sorry, a sigh escapes me and the guide comes back to our group. We should keep going before it comes back. I glance at Bimelay and, and realize he too is looking relieved at the guide before us. And then I see it. The first prowler, it is still there. It's right there. I shift around, pulling Bimelay behind me. The prowler lunges after him, barely missing Bimelay. But striking my lantern instead, the fire goes out, and the two of us are plunged into an unearthly darkness. Then there's a sick splash. I realize the Nyx has retreated into the water. Somehow Bimelay and I are still standing. Kika. We're still here. Thank you. Thank you. Something cold, wet, and slimy has grabbed my ankle. Kick off! Jeez, these fast. I kick my leg out as fast as I can, and the Nyx hold slips. It can't pull with the momentum I've gained against it. Margaret rushes to my side, her lantern hanging out towards the Nyx. The light brushes its face. We see it for an instant, its eyes wide, and then it slides back into the smooth surface of the water. How are we gonna keep everybody alive? This is gonna be horrible. Bimley grabs Margaret and I both, helping us towards the center of the bridge and cu cussing under his breath. I only looked away for one second! It's fine, Bimele. We're all fine. <sighs> are you actually alright? Margaret cocks her head down, examining my ankle. But there's n But there's nothing but a wet smudge around my trousers. I am fine. I say that, though I don't actually want to let go of Bemele. I need to in order to relight our lantern and provide us with actual safety. But I s feel such a strong desire not to be alone in this moment. I shake my head roughly and let go of him. Relighting the lantern as fast as I am able. Kika, thank you. Again. You You're saved welcome. my life. I won't let this happen again. But I like saving your life. It's gonna be a love story. Yes. Yes. It would be good for all of us to pay more attention. Oh gosh. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Um. Margaret nods solemnly. Suddenly, it seems we're all on the same side. It. It isn't only Bimele and I. She is with us in more than simply presence. The guide's voice is as cold as the monster's grasp. In. Ends my train. We thought. lost the lantern I threw. A Nyx grabbed it after the light went out. Margaret makes a noise. I glance over, wondering whether she's upset, but there's a small smile on her face. It's better side. than them taking anything else. That's true. A nervous laugh bubbles out of me and just as quickly stops. Bimelay chuckles in response, and our collective tension eases up, the adrenaline draining from our bodies. We need to keep walking. The guide starts down the bridge again, and we join him. I try to clamp down on the relief. The ease that wants to flood my head is not- it's not over. The Prowler is gone, but so is Bimelay's lantern. You can stay near me, Bimelay, since your lantern is lost. Ooh. I... I appreciate it. Margaret goes ahead of us. Bimelay stays by my side as I keep at the end of the line. I ship it. Sorry. 
There we go. Margaret goes on ahead of us, but Emily stays by my side, and I keep, as I keep at the end of the line. The breath of release from Margaret and Bimele is quite qu quickly swallowed by the somber atmosphere of the Sinlos as well, replaced by the gravity of the near-death experience. Ten minutes. Ten minutes? Okay. I'm just gonna try to keep this video at 15 minutes. Never mind celebrating his survival. Something like that shouldn't have happened in the first place. The memory of the prowlers reaching out towards us appears each time I close my eyes. Why does it look like something's dripping down their faces? It's ectoplasma. I don't know. Probably. Uh, the prowlers are on Margaret's mind too. Looking at her paint, pained expression, it isn't... Yeah. It's as though the m moment of relief never existed at all. I'm not sure. Me neither. Something's wrong with them, though. They're nicks. Of course They I'm live in water. Air shouldn't be good for the things, but they want to drown humans so much they're willing to drag themselves around on land? It's not right. Hmm. Of course it, of course it isn't. They're monsters. They likely don't uh, do not understand even the concept of right and wrong. Well, I don't disagree that there's something very wrong about them. I truly, truly hope that's the last we'll see of the prowlers. <sighs> well, I don't disagree. Oh shoot. <laughs> um. Something comes to her mind causing Margaret to end her part of the conversation early. You. Uh, since you two have to share a light, wouldn't it be safer to be in the middle? Hmm. Margaret stops and waits for Bimela and I to reach that her position. That way, you'll catch the edges of my light and the guides, and it won't be so dangerous if Bimele loses his position momentarily. Smart. That's a very kind offer, Margaret. But that sounds like she's gonna die. Uh, okay. Bimley's surprise is so apparent I want to cover his face with my hands to stop him from insulting her. She merely smirks. I think Margaret may be surprised with herself, too. Bimley returns to his usual surety. As thoughtful as it is, I, at least, am fine with bringing up the rear. I'm used to keeping watch for monsters, and since there are two of us, I can pay attention to the back while Kika focuses ahead. It's not my light, though, so I shouldn't be the one to decide what she should do with it. Margaret and Bimele turn to look at me in unison. It seems like it's my decision. Ah, no, I don't. I don't know what is going to happen. Being stuck in the... Oh, shoot, I didn't read that. Uh, something about she can't keep track of Margaret if she's behind us. But being stuck in the middle of the group could also be dangerous depending on what circumstances we come across. Getting pincered by the enemy would be an almost sure death, no matter how experienced Vimalay and I are. I just don't know how to expect, or don't know what to expect from this bridge, and that makes things so much more difficult. Uh, so you're staying point. behind? Yep. I don't know, it just makes more sense to me. Seems like it. Yes, I think we'll be good here. But really, thank you. That was a very kind offer. Well, alright. 
Margaret respects our decision and trots ahead a bit to catch up with the guide. He has paid no mind to the entire affair. Of course he hasn't. He's just a guide. He doesn't care. Oh, it's 15 minutes. So, I don't want to sound like a child, but how much longer until we arrive at the halfway point? <laughs> Not even halfway? We still have some ways to go. Press. Damn. I suppress my laughter yet again at his pouting response. The gloom we've been under dissipates slightly, like the light flickering the The first the trial fog. tends to be the most difficult. I believe we will only react better from this point on. I like the way you think. <laughs> then a gleam enters Bimelay's eyes and he grins. I think Kika deserves a round of applause. Her quick reflexes are owed the utmost appreciation. Thank you, thank you. Aw, oh, you too much. Aww. He leaned softly into my shoulder, trying to get me to... what? It was indeed a sight. You're quite capable. Bemele was also a sight, but for very different reasons. <laughs> the way he froze with his mouth all agape was a laugh in itself. <laughs> Bimele shakes a fist at Margaret in mock anger, then shoots me an affectionate look. Brr. Mm. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You should know, <laughs> she and I are usually on equal footing. <laughs> the only reason you had footing at all is because she pulled you back. Okay, Margaret, give him the benefit of the doubt. He didn't see it coming. <laughs> I'm lucky I did. Bimele laughs self-consciously, scratching his head. That's very true. You can always count on Kika. Yeah. Yay. I keep my eyes steadily ahead, unsure how I should respond. I'm pleased, almost grateful to hear that, what they think of me. But I don't know what I could say that wouldn't seem pathetic. <laughs> Instead, I contribute the best way I can. I keep my focus on the path ahead of us. Without a response from me, the conversation quickly dies out. Still, it eases my heart to be on such a friendly terms with my companion. After some time, I notice Margaret isn't keeping up with the guide as much as she was before. I realize it's because the guide has inc increased his pace. Margaret begins to jog in effort to keep up with him, and Bemele and I do the same. Despite this, the guide keeps getting further away. This is really suspicious. We go faster and faster until suddenly we're full sprinting across the slick wooden boards. Figures in the dark fog fly past us in a blur. It occurs to me that the branching paths in the bridge are, appear to be sinking? I try hard to swallow my rising panic. The guide shouts something, but it's drowned out by the frantic pounding of our footsteps. I'm trying to piece together what he said. Don't. Stop. Turn. What? He takes a masterfully sharp right down a different path using his own momentum and the sleek wood to slide into the new direction with no loss of speed. Margaret must not have worked out the warning either as she's completely caught off guard by the guide's change in course. She runs straight ahead past the turn and continues down the path we've been following up until now. She clumsily begins to halt her momentum down the wrong bridge. Then I come up on the fork. Turn! I make a hard turn following the guide and leaving Margaret at the rear. I'm sorry, Margaret! Bemelay's footsteps stay loud as, as loud as they were before. He's made the turn as close behind as, me as ever. Out of the corner of my eye, I see Margaret turn around and try to come back to us, only to have the bridge in front of her fall away. No! I was just beginning to like her. I slow down for a breath, feeling the impulse to turn back, but ignore it. There's no time. Margaret can make the jump, and then she'll rejoin us. I keep my eyes glued to the guide's back, ears pursed, perked for Margaret's footsteps approaching behind us. Then I hear it. A scream. No! I whip around, sliding to a stop. Margaret is sinking. The bridge she's on is sinking into the water. She's disappearing. She didn't jump. What are you doing?! Margaret's head shoots up, her face drained of all color. Jump! She stumbles near the edge of the bridge, staring at the placid water of the lake. Even from the distance, from a distance, I can see her shaking. 
I can't say if it's from the bridge descent or her own fear. She barely seems to remain standing. I see it swallow painfully. Margaret bends and tries to jump. She curves in a small arc, achieving more height than she should, then lands directly in the lake with a muted splash. Bemelay starts beside. Wait, Bemelay starts be beside me, but I grab his hand and pull. We're running. We start running again, leaving Margaret flailing in the water behind us. Oh. We don't need to watch this. We both know exactly what will happen to her now. Margaret's anguished cries pierce the night, and then the screaming stops. My legs grow weak. This isn't right, but I push myself to keep going. Bemelay curses between heavy breaths calling those things every foul name in his large book. <laughs> I try to focus on the pounding of my feet, but the brain won't cooperate. Instead, I imagine Margaret's terror as she clawed, as she's clawed and clawed to pieces by the Nixie. After everything, I didn't help her. We left her in the dark. As the night wears on, our strength rapidly fades. How much longer will this last? People have to rest sometime. Almost... As if in response to my thought, the guide abruptly halts. I skid to a stop as well, sliding on the surface of the wood. <sighs> Why did we stop? Bemelay's voice is tired, but his guard is up. Shoot, it's 20 minutes now. The guide didn't, doesn't answer, just stares at something slightly out of view. I step up to join him, following his gaze further down the path. Huh? Curled up in a little ball, illuminated by the lantern's light, cowers a person. His hand grip his head. He rocks from side to side, mumbling incoherently. Okay, this is a good place to stop. New person, save. Uh, save on number one, I guess. Uh, okay, yeah, this is a good place to stop. Um, new person, I will hopefully play again soon. Probably not tonight, but... um. I should have another episode up soon. I don't know how much is left of the game. The If you go the different route, it's really, really short. So this is much longer than I was expecting. So I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.